First of all, I would like to thank to uh, you all, the participants, and also the supporting institution and also organizer of this workshop. Um, it's been a very long process until we reach this point. Just to give you a little bit of background why we do this, uh, actually uh, C4 and the International Tropical Pit Center, uh, ITPC, uh, were thinking of having this uh, event as a small workshop in Tallinn, Estonia, when the organizer was uh, organizing the International Pit Congress. Uh, it was planned in June this year, but suddenly it did not happen because of the pandemic. So we uh, repackaged this uh, idea and think about having it as a series of webinar, uh, regardless where we are. And we expect to reach as many people as possible and definitely will be larger than uh, what we, have, we were thinking if it was in Tallinn, Estonia. So uh, we approach uh, the Ministry of Forestry, uh, BRG, the Pitland Restoration Agency in Indonesia, and share the idea of having this. So we were thinking of run it then as a webinar and uh, the idea was welcomed by both the ministry and the, the, the PRG. So thank you very much for that support and uh, perhaps uh, we are better off because what we are going to do today will be much more than what we could have been doing in, in Tallinn and perhaps towards the end of this uh, series we might be able to present the full-fledged of the criteria and indicator uh, identification processes in uh, Tallinn, uh, probably in, in May uh, next year. So uh, we will come with a better idea and share uh, the, the result of this series of webinar. So I said, keep saying that it is a series because this is the first of the series. Uh, we try to explore um, uh, the possibility of incorporating criteria and indicators. So we, we try to set the scene today and uh, we expect to have at least two or three more uh, webinar to go into deeper kind of exercise to look at the biophysical, socioeconomic and other aspects that might be uh, useful to consider in uh, designing the criteria and indicator for tropical peatland restoration. So we will come up with a kind of synthesis by the end of this year, and that will be the um, kind of um, deliberate uh, outcome of this uh, series. And uh, during the course of this series, uh, we are trying to identify the criteria and indicators, and more importantly, to validate that if that can be used for tropical peatland restoration monitoring. So the core of this activity is really is in the, the second and the third webinar. So um, stay tuned, we, we will be there and uh, engage uh, you uh, throughout the, the process. So for today, we are fortunate to have a whole set of uh, dignitaries and, and also prominent people working in this area. We, again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Alu Dohong, who is uh, the Vice Minister of uh, Environment and Forestry of Indonesia, and also Pak Fuad, uh, Pak Nasir Fuad, who is the head of BRG. Both of them will help us to uh, set the tone where are we heading to in the next four or five months or so. And then in the first section, as I said, we are going to set the scene. Again, we are fortunate to have colleagues from the Ministry of Forestry, uh, Ms. Budi Susanti, who will be sharing with us about the challenge about what happened in Indonesia peatland management. And uh, Lira Miles from uh, WCMC of UNEP uh, will be sharing with us about uh, criteria in with regard to biodiversity uh, framework, etc. And thanks to Maria and uh, Nutinan from FAO, who's been very uh, keen and su continuous support uh, support uh, person to, to this uh, process. And uh, she will be sharing with us about the, the monitoring 
of uh, peatland um, throughout the world and uh, perhaps we can learn from uh, these two uh, ladies about this global context of uh, environmental uh, processes, uh, especially when we are talking about uh, criteria and indicators. In the second session, uh, we will go deeper into more technical and we are glad to have colleagues from Indonesia who will be sharing with us about the experience, especially in the past five years in restoring peatland in Indonesia. Um, Mr. Budi Wardana from BRG, Professor Maas from Gajah Mada University, and Mr. Agustinus uh, Tambupolon from Fordia, the uh, Research and Development Center of the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, and my friend Sonny Mumbunan from the University of Indonesia. And uh, the entire process will be concluded by Mr. Harris Gunawan, uh, one of the deputies uh, in the BRG, who will again wrap this uh, event up and then help us to move forward what to do in the next series of webinar. So that's uh, for today. And we are uh, really happy to think about uh, what would be the output from this process throughout uh, the uh, rest of this year. We are expecting to have a set of validated criteria and indicator, uh, especially to, to monitor and assess peatland restoration, not necessarily in Indonesia perhaps, because we work very closely with uh, ITPC, so probably the result can be shared with uh, colleagues in uh, the ITPC member countries, Congos, uh, DRC and ROC, and perhaps also Peru. So we, we will reach out uh, that far, uh, learning from these uh, lessons. Hopefully we will be familiarizing ourselves with the validated uh, criteria and indicator themselves. So when the knowledge is exchanged, I believe uh, uh, throughout this discussion, we will be uh, learn more and more. And uh, while verifying those uh, CNI, we will be uh, coming up with, with this set of CNI uh, towards the end of, of this year. So with that uh, said, um, again, uh, it's been very privileged to be able to, to work with you all. Your participation uh, will be very much uh, welcome uh, during this discussion. Please use the uh, um, chat me to think about what you can contribute. Uh, do that and I will, I will read the uh, questions and comments uh, for the uh, speakers while we are listening to the discussion in each session. Somewhere in the middle of this session, we will have a break for 10 minutes and uh, perhaps we can use that time to go to the restroom or whatever stretch you like, but uh, we will also show some of uh, uh, videos that are relevant to the topic that we are discussing today. So thanks also to our supporter, uh, USAID, uh, Nick Fee, uh, certainly FAO and, and UNEP has been very uh, instrumental in, in helping and designing this workshop, also the uh, Global Bitland Initiative. Um, before um, I would like to, to invite our guests of honor, um, that would be uh, a set of uh, agenda that we will be going through today and um, it's, it's quite packed, we will have two and a half hours more or less or probably three, so please bear with us. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, pa Nasir Fuad uh, to address the participant and give you a wise word what to do in the next few months, especially today when we are discussing uh, this for the first time. Pa Nasir, time is yours. Thank you, pa Daniel, uh, for your kind and great initiative. Uh, to get us all today. Um, good afternoon, good morning, uh, all uh, colleagues. Uh, Excellency Vice Minister of Environment and Forestry, uh, distinguished uh, speakers, 
from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, from the RG, uh, from colleagues from FAO, uh, UNEP, uh, ITPC, universities, NGOs, and all honorable guests. Um, let me start by saying that uh, we appreciate, of course, all your support and attentions and cooperations with Indonesia in working to improve our management, our practices, and the science also behind that uh, for tropical peatland. Indonesia have more than 500 uh, tropical uh, peatland ecosystems uh, stretched from Aceh to Papua. Uh, the size, I think the distance of about from Portugal to Moscow uh, with 26 million hectares of tropical peatland ecosystems. And we are very grateful to have our president, President Joko Widodo, who himself have personal attentions and uh, support and guidance uh, towards our agenda of peatland restorations and peatland protections in Indonesia and also uh, appreciate it very much to Ibu Siti Nurbaya, our ministers, in providing policy and guidelines uh, on all of these tropical peatland uh, agenda. Now, um, criteria indicator for the peatland restorations, uh, we have had already a ministerial decree, a ministerial regulations number 16 of 2017, bringing three categories of criteria. Uh, number one is the water table. It has to stay above 40 centimeters. And number two is the layer of uh, pyrites it cannot be exposed um, to keep the pit land, let's say, healthy and restored. And number three is the land cover, vegetation cover. Yeah, so these are three, let's say, biophysical properties. And we set up our program, restoration program in Indonesia, towards these three criteria. So let's, I call this the ultimate criteria for pit restoration. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take a few minutes to describe what we're doing. Number one, um, we adopt three approaches in our program. The we call it three R's. The first R uh, is the rewetting program. The rewetting is, of course, to bring up the water level and avoid more draining of pit land um, and make sure that pit is wet as possible. It will decrease greenhouse gas emissions, it will minimize fire hazard during the dry months. And that rewetting program addressed to the two criteria set up in the ministerial regulation, which is the water table and the uh, pirate, uh, pyrite uh, layers here. Yeah. And then number, number two, our program, our approach, we call it uh, uh, the second R, is the revegetation, is the replanting there with the endemic species that grow in the pitland. So this also uh, addressed the, the third criteria from the ministerial regulation, which is the land cover. Now, the third part, which is very important, as you all know, there are tens of millions of people living in our pitland ecosystems. Some of them practice traditional agriculture and fisheries and so forth, but many have uh, adopted uh, different types of cultivations that involve draining. So that creates some problems, as well as we have uh, left off or let's call it, problems from the past. Many concession license have been issued by the government in the past on these pitland areas, and they have legitimate license, they're operating in that area. Uh, minister, the minister in the city have issued uh, several regulations and policies driving those concession holders to improve their practices and so on. But um, we have to face with the problems, uh, mostly with our communities as well. That's why we adopt the third R, we call it revitalization of the livelihood. So we have to provide solution for these farmers on, uh, on how can they still cultivate the pit land, which is uh, which they have been living there for maybe hundreds of years uh, without compromising further the integrity of the ecosystem. Now, 
This is perhaps the beyond biophysical uh, criteria indicators. Uh, our third R, of course, uh, we adopt that because we're answering the problems for communities, but it goes towards the ultimate criteria, which is the water table, the high right, and the land cover, vegetation cover. Now, uh, our, uh, our vice president, six months ago when we were summoned, uh, he gave a very strong emphasis um, on changing people attitude and behavior is perhaps the hardest uh, challenges is the harder challenge so how can we also look at ourselves when we run this third art the third approach um, how do we know that we're on the right track in building awareness in uh, changing attitude and behavior towards more friendly practices on pitland which then leading up to uh, improve ecological function of the pitland yeah so how can we look into that now of course we need the criteria which is maybe more sociological cultural social and so on and perhaps economists as well and i welcome uh but daniel and all of you to share your thoughts to share your experience analysis in the past and reports you have been written or you have been uh, analyzing and how can we move quicker for us to tell ourselves whether we are on the right track on building that strong awareness, uh, changing the attitude and behavior towards more friendly pitland ecosystem uh, cultivation and practices. Um, we have worked with these communities and local government in rewetting the area of uh, 800,000 hectares in the last four years and a half. Um, I'm not saying that we already achieved the goals from the Ibu City uh, criteria in the regulation, but we are on the way to go to that. Now, it's also interesting if we can uh, evaluate ourselves, assess ourselves that if there are progressive indicators, so when we look at what we are doing, we look at certain indicator criteria, we know that we are on the right track, halfway, three quarter or a quarter. So it would be interesting to, uh, to look at also these progressive indicators in the future. Uh, up on top of the one I mentioned before, which is the uh, non-biophysical, which will lead into a uh, healthier pitland ecosystem uh, function. Number two that I like to mention is the emphasis given by the president, instruction by the president, many, many times uh, when we were summoned uh, in uh, in the palace, uh, he stressed very strongly that pitland ecosystem has to be the basis. So the pitland restoration work, the improvement of governance and management on pitland has to be looked at the landscape level, has to be looked at what we call KHG or uh, pitland landscape, pitland ecosystems. Now, it's like the healthy, the healthiness uh, feature of the ecosystems. How can we also look at that scale? So I encourage you in the discussions, in your shared discussion in the future, to look into that landscape level. Uh, I trust uh, the direction from the president, the instruction is the proper one. So in solving the problems of pitland restorations, we cannot look in one specific side of the whole ecosystem. So we, look, we need to look at the whole ecosystem holistically, of course, uh, the design of the pitland restoration program has to be based on that whole ecosystem of the kahagi and we have more than 500 kahagi in the country now these are the things that i would really encourage you to look at uh, so if i may summarize again looking into uh, the progressive indicators toward the ultimate uh, goal uh, looking into the uh, perhaps intermediary criteria indicators that leading toward that goal as well on the non-biophysical. And the last part is looking at the landscape level. It's looking at the uh, pitland ecosystem level, which can be challenging because some landscapes of our pitland in Indonesia have a size of half a million hectares. Some is pretty small, a few thousand hectares only. So it depends on where we are in the island, in the part, in which part of the island. Uh, we may face very dynamic situations 
biophysically a part of, of course, a cultural and social uh, structure. Um, one thing I miss, I like to mention also that we worked in 590 villages so far. 590 villages, uh, this village territories encompass uh, 4.6 million hectares of pitland. 4.6 million. We have been working with the village executive, the village uh, officials, the village councils, the informal village leaders, uh, community groups, could be farmer groups, could be women's group, could be youths, and also with artists in the village. We work with them uh, to try to interfere on the village policies, policies of five-year development plan of the village. Policies in uh, many, in, uh, in controlling which kind of activities are allowed, what kind of activities cannot be done in certain areas of their pitland. Um, and also policy of using their village fund. The village grant that they got from the government, uh, some can be used for pitland restorations, and some villages indeed have allocated that part of the fund. So we're very appreciative that uh, we have seen very progressive village uh, leaders and officials uh, and groups agree with us to use some of the village grant uh, for pit later restoration. Now, this is also interesting if you look at that part, which will ensure the sustainability of our pit later restoration program, looking at the lowest level in Indonesia, the village level, that they mainstreaming the pitland ecosystems and pitland friendly practices in their daily uh, activities, as well as in their village policy uh, setting. It can be also interesting of exercise to look into what kind of criteria indicator we need to look at at the village level. I guess, Pak Daniel, uh, distinguished speakers and honorable guests, uh, these are my messages. I again thank you uh, for everybody who take time to participate in this webinar. I thank also your prepared efforts that you have made in sharing your thoughts, your analysis, uh, your experiences uh, during the next two hours and a half. Thank you very much, Pak Daniel. Thank you very much, Pak Nasir. There was a very thoughtful suggestion and advice on the way forward, the way we are heading to. And I'm particularly glad you mentioned about community level and also gender balance. I think we, we take a note on that uh, very wise advice for us today. Thank you. So uh, next, we would like to welcome um, Dr. Alu Dohong, the Vice Minister of Environment and Forestry, who is going to give his keynote speech and officially open this webinar. All right, thank you. Uh, Honorable, the head of uh, Pitland Restoration Agency, the representative from UN Environment Program, Food and Agriculture Organization, Center for International Forestry Research, Global Pitland Initiative, Honorable representative from ministries and government agencies, distinguished speakers, moderators, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, good morning, uh, maybe good evening for other participants from overseas. Welcome you all in this uh, joining uh, this webinar. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude and appreciation to C4 and International Tropical Peatland Center in collaboration with Ministry of Environment and Forestry and the Peatland Restoration Agency for organizing this online workshop entitled Exploring the Criteria and Indicators for Tropical Peatland Restoration. Indeed, it is an honor and pleasure for me to be part of this important workshop. This thing is uh, participant, ladies and gentlemen. I've been reported by the organizer that today's webinar is an initial workshop, which is, will be followed by subsequent consultative workshop. The objective of this online workshop is to identify key contributors and suitable methodology for selecting appropriate criteria 
and associated indicators based on characteristics such as relevance, ease of application, responsiveness, representativeness, consistency, and sensitivity, sensitivity to the local condition. This allows restoration target to be adequately quantified and successfully measured. Ladies and gentlemen, peatland are critical ecosystems that play important roles at global, regional, and national level in controlling climate change, protecting biodiversity and environment, and contributing to the social economic welfare of people who depend on peatland. Indonesian peatland are the fourth largest in the world after Canada, Russia, and the USA. Uh, Indonesian peatland, including peat swamp forest, comprise 36% of the world's tropical peatland. They hold a large pool of carbon storage, about 30 up to 40% of the global soil carbon deposit, making them one of the world's largest carbon storage and contributing to the global climate change mitigation and adaptation. As one of the largest tropical peatland, Indonesian peatland provide numerous ecosystem services. In their, in their natural condition, peatland support a large range of habitats and provide home for biodiversity. They also play important roles in retention, purification, and release of water and providing vital ecosystem function and services, reducing scale and mitigate the impact of droughts, floods, and intrusion of salt water into productive peatland areas. Despite their importance for environmental services and economic sources, tropical peatland are among the most vulnerable ecosystems that could be threatened by anthropogenic activities. A major threat to peatland degradation in many countries, in, including in Indonesia in particular, is a clearing and peatland drainage. Clearing and draining of peatland over recent decades has resulted in unprecedented increase in peat fires, which not only produce haze and pollution, but also endanger critical ecological services and affect ecosystem quality including biodiversity loss and increase of greenhouse gases emission. Indonesian, Indonesian peatland have faced deforestation and drainage since 1986 actually, mainly due to timber plantation and agric agricultural purposes. Distinguished guests, participants, and ladies and gentlemen, the government of Indonesia has demonstrated a strong commitment on the protection and sustainable management of peatland ecosystem. President of the Republic of Indonesia, Bapak Joko Widodo, gives a very clear direction to protect and sustainable manage the peatland ecosystem, as well as prevent from potential forest peatland fire related. The enactment of government regulation number 71, 2014, and then revised by Government Regulation Number 57, 2016, provide the authority to the government of Indonesia to protect and manage Indonesian peatland ecosystem based on peatland hydrological unit approach and establish peatland function into conservation and cultivation function. Criteria and indicators for peatland ecosystem degradation are clearly mentioned in the Article 23 of the Government Regulation Number 71, uh, 2014. Article 23, first two, as degraded peatland, uh, mentioned that peatland ecosystem with protected function are declared as a degraded peatland if it exceeded the standard criteria for degraded peatland as a follow. A, there is a arti an artificial drainage bill on peatland ecosystem. B, 
there is an export of pirates all quartz sediment under the pit layer and see there is a reduction in the land cover in peatland ecosystem uh, furthermore article 23 first three mention the peatland ecosystem with cultivation function function are declared as a degraded peatland if it met the following standard criteria first water level in the peatland is lower than 40 centimeters below the pit surface and b there is an export of pirates of quartz sediment under the pit layer these criteria and indicators are then used as the baseline for measuring the performance of peatland restoration activity in indonesia referring to those government regulation and direction currently there are 280 concession holders in 224 peatland hydrological unit have implemented the government regulation requirement with estimated impact of restoration area is about 3.47 million hectares. The restoration activities conducted through the establishment of peatland rewetting infrastructure including construction of more than 10,690 units of water table compliance points and 1,121 data loggers for real-time water table monitoring, 792 units of rainfall monitoring station, and construction of 27,889 units of canal blocking board without and with spillway system. In implementing the peatland protection management in community areas, government of Indonesia has also developed various community-based program to empower community to actively participate and improve community livelihood in line with the implementation of sustainable peatland management. The Ministry of Environment and Forestry of the government of Indonesia has worked together with seven universities and nine provinces in recruiting 121 facilitators to assist the communities in implementing restoration and peatland management in the area. The total degraded peatland area restored resulted from this implementing program is estimated about 9,950 9, uh, 9, uh, uh, hectares. In relation, uh, relating the restoration achievement aforementioned with greenhouse gases reduction mitigation, those restoration activities have successfully reduced approximately 280 million ton CO2 equivalent from uh, water management improvement, which were monitored through the CIMATA level uh, water level monitoring the database this achievement will significantly contribute to meet indonesia's and ndc target the success pool of indonesia in reducing emission from its rtdd plus performance by around 17 million tons co2 equivalent in the period of 2016 and 2017 has been approved by Norway, Norway government through result-based payment mechanism on the basis of letter of intent between governments of Norway and Indonesia. And moreover, Indonesia also succeeded in receiving a, a, a approved uh, result-based payment proposal from Green Climate Fund for paying Indonesia's emission reduction achievement from our EDD plus uh, activities during uh, 2014 up to 2016 period, with a total reduction around 20.3 million tons of CO2 equivalent. This achievement will raise public confidence about seriousness of the government 
in implementing its commitment toward protecting protecting peatland, including uh, protecting forests, including peatlands. This thing is guys, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope we can formulate the reliable, practical, practical and scientifically proven sets of criteria and indicators to monitor and assess peatland restoration success and the way forward to achieve the goal in protecting our tropical peatland as well as gaining global beneficiaries on climate change. So I need to <clears throat> stress here so the indicators and criteria can be divided into three three major uh, criteria. First is, uh, Daniel already mentioned about this biophysical and, and second is social economics. And I think it's very important also to include in this kind of criteria, we call it regulatory criteria that's already uh, implemented in Indonesia. So before I conclude my speech, I wish this webinar will provide better scientific knowledge and practical experiences on peatland restoration monitoring and strengthen cooperation and coordination among stakeholders involved in tropical peatland restoration effort. As one of the leading tropical peatland countries and also founder of the International Tropical Peatland Center, we are also happy to share what we have already achieved so far that we later on will be, will be explained by Ibu uh, Abi, and experiences that we learn from this workshop to our colleague in the ITBC member countries. I wish you all a very productive and fruitful workshop and looking forward to receive constructive recommendation out from this important event. So thank you uh, very much for your kind attention and by asking blessing from our almighty God and from you all, I officially open this uh, uh, seminar. And thank you very much and have a good uh, afternoon to all of you. Thank you.